Hey guys, Waggish American here. Today, bring you another model build video. Today, I'm going to be building Airfix's 172nd scale Curtis Tomahawk Mark II B. This is also part of a group build over on the Fine Scale Modeler forums. I will link it in the description if you're interested in joining. It's basically an uh, Airfix commemorative anniversary group build type thing. So, any Airfix kit from any era is acceptable and encouraged, and you should all jump on over. It's a lot of fun. As usual, the build began in the cockpit. Due to the small scale of the kit, all weathering was applied after the cockpit was painted. It was initially painted with Tamiya XF-71 cockpit green. After an hour or two for the interior green to dry, I used a variety of thinned Vallejo paints, primarily flat black, silver, and red, to pick out the smaller details in the cockpit. Tamiya tape was used to make lap belts. They are thinly cut pieces of said Tamiya tape super glued at both ends and painted in flesh tones. Once all paint had set and the lap belts were in place, I dry brushed the entire surface with an old brush loaded with Vallejo light gray. After a protective coat of Tamiya Clear had dried, I used brown Tamiya panel line accent color to, to the cockpit surfaces. During this stage, I also applied the instrument panel decals to the instrument panel itself. I then glued the fuselage floor assembly directly to the lower wing and began work on the larger assembly such as the fuselage and wing section. I used a thin brush and a little bit of Lejo silver to create a chipping effect throughout the cockpit. Because I was unable to find my Tamiya weathering powders, I made a custom mix of orange, brown, and yellow pastels to create a dusty effect throughout the cockpit.
For the first time, I used a thin razor saw to restore panel lines. This worked fairly well and minimized the ridges that build up on the side of panel lines if you try to do them by scraping or with a normal knife. I mated the wing assembly to the fuselage. This was the worst fit of the whole kit, likely a result of assembling the wings prior to cementing the lower wing onto the fuselage. That's usually how I like to do it, but in this kit the instructions specifically said to do the wings first and I decided to follow them. My one piece of advice would probably be, um, don't follow that, attach the lower wing, then add the upper wings to fit. The large gap on the right wing root was filled first with super glue and then smoothed over and sanded with Tamiya putty. After I had masked all clear parts with Tamiya tape, I painted them with XF71. Having allowed several days for primer to dry, I pre-shaded the entire aircraft with Tamiya Flat Black. The underside was then sprayed with XF21. All exterior paints were thinned roughly 50-50 with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner. Once the sky had dried, I masked off all edges and painted the upper surface with XF51. After masking the XF51, I pre-shaded again with black. I then applied several thin coats of XF26. After allowing two coats of Tamiya Clear to dry, I applied decals using Microset and Microsol, which work exceptionally well with these cartograph decals. Allowing the decals to set overnight, I then sprayed the upper surfaces with Tamiya Buff thinned 9 parts thinner to 1 part buff to try to dull and get the sun fading effect. I underestimated exactly how much the clear coat on top of this would kill this effect, so I went a little bit too light on it. Another gloss coat was applied, and once it had set, Flory Models Dark Earth was used to accentuate the panel lines.
A sponge dipped in Vallejo silver and then mostly uh, blotted off onto paper towel was used to apply relatively heavy chipping to leading surfaces on the aircraft. This is supposed to stim simulate the kind of heavy weathering you'd get with all the sandblasts in North Africa. After setting the canopy in place using Pledge Future Floor Polish, the build was complete. Alright, and that is the completed build. I hope you all enjoyed it. A couple notes about the kit. First of all, it was a really fun build. It was pretty quick. Um, everything fit well for the most part. The only things you really need to keep an eye out for are around the cowl. There are especially some problems on the underside here. There's a really big seam line I had some problems with and I didn't cover up very well. The other thing I'd like to just warn people about, um, the wheel wells. The kit offers no guidance whatsoever on what color these should be painted. So you will have to check your own references and decide how accurately you want to portray them. I just went with a interior, like an American zinc chromate interior green. Um, supposedly this is fairly accurate. The wall areas are actually cloth and should be some kind of tan, but I could not be, I don't know, I just didn't feel like doing that, so it's overall green. Other than those couple things, the exterior covers on the landing gear are pretty awful on this kit. They did not fit for me and I ended up having to fill this with white glue, let it sit, fill it again because it sunk, and then paint over that. And it still doesn't look great, but I mean, you just don't get up close, don't be looking at it too close. But yeah, it's a good kit. Um, if you're looking for one in this scale, this is pretty much the only real option and it's, it's good. So I'll see you guys next time.